Bryson's Best 10. Here we go for this week. Week 8, Bryson's Best 10. And today, the 10th best team in the NFL is the Cincinnati Bengals. And here is why. So Cincinnati drops a spot from a week ago. That's because somebody else jumped them uh, uh, last week, or th this week, this past week. Cincinnati's the 10th best team in the NFL. Here's why. Obviously, they didn't play in week 7. But Joe Burrow is as healthy as he has ever been all season long. We saw that in the last couple of games going into the bye after that 1-3 and three start for Cincinnati. Played great against Arizona, albeit it is Arizona. Uh, played fine against Seattle. Looked more comfortable. Again, that's the big thing for Cincinnati. They cannot be a contender if Joe Burrow is not healthy and ready to go. He gets a full two weeks before the 49ers game, and that's going to be a tough test given his offensive line against that Niners defensive line. That could be a little bit of a matchup problem for Cincinnati. But he feels good. He, he said he, he's not. You're seeing him on the sideline. He's not limping around. They're going to get T. Higgins back soon healthy to help. I mean, Jamar Chase was getting a crap ton of the targets in Cincinnati. So you're getting T. Higgins there to draw a little bit of the attention away from Jamar Chase. Joe Mixon is, is still a factor in the backfield. I'm telling y'all, this defense, they got outgained by Seattle two weeks ago in that game in Cincinnati, but this is a defense that's capable of holding some of the better offenses in football to under 20 points a game. That's the best defense in the brief Joe Burrow era thus far. I love their pass rush, love their linebacking core, and frankly, the secondary's been better than I thought it'd be. So Cincinnati today, the 10th best team in the National Football League. Down a spot from last week down I'm sorry we're down th uh, four spots from last week the Miami Dolphins are the ninth best team in the National Football League and here's why so Miami is sort of in a spot where they're really good at playing their game. They're not great at playing yours. And that's, to me, what separates Miami from the upper echelon of the NFL. Your San Francisco's, your Kansas City's, your Baltimore's, your uh, the, the top, top team, top tier teams in the NFL. And Miami is still excellent. Don't just sell your Miami stock. Don't get rid of it. Two is still having a fantastic season, as is Tyreek Hill, as is Jalen Waddell. Uh, again, listen, they, they needed that loss on Sunday night, I think, against uh, Philadelphia, where they just kind of got punched in the mouth on national television in front of the whole country. This is a team that's still capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, against any of the best offenses in the NFL that can go in, in the shootouts. They can play Big 12 football. Question is, can they play physical SEC Big 10 football? I think so. I like their offensive line. I really like Marheen Mostert. I think they have the personnel to do it. I think they have the coaching to do it with Mike McDaniel. The question is, can they put it all together? The defense is still a massive question for me, but the good news is they'll get uh, they'll, they'll get uh, Jalen Ramsey back soon, coming off of an injury, ex as well as Xavier Rhodes. So they'll be in a good spot. Uh, Xavier Rose, Xavier, uh, Xavier Howard, I'm sorry, not Xavier Rose, Xavier Howard will be coming back from injury as well, so I still like where Miami is right now. At number eight, my team back in Bryce's best 10, the Pittsburgh Steelers are the eighth best team in the National Football League, and here's why. So Pittsburgh was out of it for the last couple of weeks. I, I didn't even put them in, even though they were three and two and they beat Baltimore. Fact of the matter is that Kenny Pickett, I, I know people don't like Kenny Pickett. Oh my God, his numbers aren't Patrick Mahomes or aren't Lamar Jackson. But here's the thing about Kenny Pickett, and you got to realize this. And I've been saying this for a while. This I said it last year when they beat the Ravens on a game-winning drive. I said, there's some limitations with Kenny. I get that. Man, this dude plays big in the fourth quarter. And that's the qualities of a guy who, if he hits a ceiling, can be a franchise quarterback, especially given the stable organization he's in now. You consider the fact that Pittsburgh, last season, remember last season, they were 2-6. and six, We're thinking, oh, Tomlin's going to have his first losing season. Rookie quarterback, rebuilding roster. And after they came out of the bye, they went, uh, sorry, 7, not 6, 7 and 2. So they played great. The defense was playing great coming out of the bye week. Kenny Pickett got more comfortable. Uh, is Matt Canada, has he evolved a little bit? I don't think he's exactly going to be put in the same conversation as Ben Johnson in Detroit. But he relied on the run more. Uh, Jalen Warren got going. They got him the ball, and they got Kenny Pickett outside the pocket. Deontay Johnson back in this lineup, one of the better number two receivers in the NFL. And obviously, this defense is headlined by the best defensive player on planet Earth. TJ Watts, who added to his, his Defensive Player of the Year campaign with an interception in the in the nickel corner slot, which is unbelievable. Linebacking core is great. Secondary is playing their butts off this season. Uh, Mike Tomlin is one of the five best coaches in all of football. Love where my Steelers are at right now. Tough test against Jacksonville next week, uh, but great, great spot. Big time win over the Rams. The Steelers are the eighth best team in the NFL. So I follow my number eight team, my team, with my quarterback, my favorite quarterback. Number seven is the Dallas. Dallas Cowboys, the Cowboys, the seventh best team in the National Football League. Dallas down a spot uh, from last week simply because they got jumped by somebody else. Dallas is at number seven for this reason. So 
I picked this team to go to the Super Bowl before the season started. I still think they have a chance to do so in a very crowded NFC. But listen, you consider the fact that the Dak Prescott is having a very solid year. The turnovers, as I predicted, are down this season. He is still, again, the limitations for Dallas is their offensive line's fine. It could be better, but it's it's good enough. I think Tony Pollard coming off this bye will be better moving forward, coming off of the injury. Dak's, think about this, folks. Dak Prescott, 81% of his throws go to CD Lamb. So Dallas, I think at this trade deadline, and Jerry's talked about they're not, they don't think they're going to be that active at the trade deadline. Well, they should be for a wide receiver, whether it's going out and getting a Hollywood Brown from Arizona, whether it's going out and getting like a Hunter Renfro from the Vegas Raiders. I'm hearing people suggest Saquon Barkley or Derrick Henry. That's not going to put Dallas closer than a wide receiver would to contending for a Super Bowl. That said, I think I and everybody loves this defense. Micah Parsons, uh, again, a little inconsistent at times. When Mike is on, he's one of the two best defensive players in all football. Ball, probably three. I'll put him behind Garrett, Miles Garrett, and obviously TJ Watt as well. I don't think the secondary is going to be in a bad spot. Deron Bland has slotted into that number two corner spot much better than I initially thought he would be. And Stephon Gilmore still an elite number one corner in this league. Linebacking course, good enough. Pass rush is excellent. Uh, I have questions about the coaching, questions about the wide receivers. Other than that, I really like Dallas uh, and I trust Dak to, to lead this team to a deep playoff run. At number six, it is the Jacksonville Jaguars up a spot from last week. So Jacksonville right now, how about this second longest winning streak in the NFL. We're not talking about it, but Jacksonville has some impressive wins on their resume, right? They beat Buffalo, who everybody loves. Buffalo's the darling of the NFL every year. Well, they beat Buffalo in London. Their second straight game they had to play in London and still beat Buffalo uh, on a neutral site field in what was really a Bills home game. Beat New Orleans in one of the toughest places to play in the NFL in that Superdome. Trevor Lawrence is playing really good football right now on one leg on the road against an elite defense. Put up 31 points, uh, pass rating over 100, play spectacular. Uh, I really love Jacksonville's receiving core. Listen, I was, you know, a Jacksonville fan was was getting on me about, hey, give this defense more respect. We are dealing with injuries. Okay, I'll give you the benefit, benefit of the doubt. This defense still is, is young, it's talented, it has some good pieces. Doug Peterson is still a tremendous head coach. Uh, Again, this offense is capable, kind of similar to Miami. Not as good as Miami, but similar in the sense that I think they can go toe-to-toe with some of the best in the NFL. It's why I had Jacksonville in the a- in the AFC Championship game this year. It's why I had Trevor Lawrence winning MVP this season, which I'm still not moving off of that because I think there's a chance. Once that knee gets healthy, he could go off this, this, this next uh, these next 10 weeks of the season. So love where Jacksonville's at, riding a four-game winning streak, uh, playing great football offensively, and st- kind of finding itself again a little bit defensively, but there's still plenty of upside there. Uh, I think Jacksonville has potential to be the biggest threat to Kansas City in the AFC with respect to teams like Baltimore and Miami. Uh, to the top five now. Uh, to the top five. Do we have uh, Do we have number five? Hang on. For some reason, number five is not in here. Okay, let's, let's, let's pull it up. Sorry about this, folks, uh, because the graphics will sometimes just disappear uh, on me right now. There it is. Okay. At number five, pull them up right here. Do not sell your stock on the Detroit Lions, who I have as the fifth best team in all football. Detroit Lions are the fifth best team in the National Football League, and here is why. So, listen, they went on the road to Baltimore, got their butts kicked throughout the <laughs> majority of that football game, throughout really all the football game. Lamar Jackson against what's a great Detroit defense ran rough shot on this team. The, the Ravens defense held the, this great Lions offense only six points on the road. That said, don't sell your stock on Jared Goff. Don't sell your stock on Dan Campbell, this offensive line, those weapons, and that defense. They had a bad day at the office. Every team does. Every, every Basically, every team outside of Kansas City, I wouldn't even call it a bad game because they lost to the Detroit Lions. I mean, for, for real, like every Philadelphia's had a bad game against the New York Jets. San Francisco really has had two bad games. Dallas has had a bad game. Uh, Jacksonville's had a bad game. Like it happens. You're going to have bad days at the offense. It's a long NFL season. But this notion that, oh, the Lions, they Ravens exposed them as pretenders. No, they're not. They're absolutely a, a threat to make the NFC title game, which is where I believe they will get. They've got a big bounce back opportunity on Monday Night Football against the Las Vegas Raiders, who have a terrible defense. I mean, Las Vegas gave up 30 points. No, no disrespect, but to Tyson Badgett. You're telling me Jared Goff isn't going to eat that defense alive and Ben Johnson, the OC, isn't going to put together a game plan to eat that defense alive on Monday Night Football. Do not sell your Lions stock. They are the fifth best team in the National Football League. At number four, 
I'm not going to panic like everybody else. The San Francisco 49ers are the fourth best team in the National Football League, and here's why. It is still, I believe, the best roster in football. The defense actually hasn't been terrible over the last couple of weeks. Not great situationally, but that's something that can be that can be fixed. They're well coached defensively uh, with, by, by Steve Wilkes. So they'll be fine in that regard. Kyle Shanahan is still one of the elite offensive minds in football. They're going to be in a rough spot this week with no Brock Purdy against a very good Cincinnati Bengals defense coming off of a bye. The, uh, Debo Samuel is still injured, as is Trent Williams. But once, the, once those three guys get back held, this team could be any team in the NFL, sometimes even with its B-plus game. But that they're talented enough to where they can do that, where Shanahan is, isn't great. Again, I'm not saying that the Niners are just the class of the NFL from a talent perspective, and then it's just everybody else. I think they're the best, uh, but it's relatively close. But that said, we got to stop overreacting to a, a, a bad Brock Purdy game, back, bad back-to-back starts for Brock Purdy. He's still one of the 12 best quarterbacks in the league, I believe. This defense is fantastic. I uh, had a little bit of a down day at the office against Kirk Cousins, who played excellent on Monday Night Football. Uh, but I've got the Niners in a good spot. I think they're the fourth best team in the National Football League. At number three, the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, in the Ellis tonight, they're up five spots from last week. Again, that Jets loss was an ugly one. But I've got Philadelphia at number three, and here's why. So, look, th- this is a team, and I've said this since before the season. It's why they're one of the best teams. And today, today, the best team in the NFC uh, on Bryson's best 10 is that Philadelphia on both sides of the ball, probably better than any team in all football, can flat out bully you up front. We saw with with Lane Johnson back in the lineup offensively, Jalen Carter back in the lineup defensively, uh, imposing their will. Again, Miami was missing some offensive linemen, but Philadelphia, as they're prone to do, took advantage. Uh, The secondary's been better. By the way, they traded for Kevin Bynard, which I love that move by Howie Roseman for Philadelphia. The The back end of that defense is the weakness of the Philadelphia Eagles. They addressed it. The only thing keeping me from putting them at number two or even number one is the fact that Jalen Hurts really has a the turnover bug right now, just some bad reads, uh, being careless with the football. He's got, uh, I think, seven, eight interceptions through the first part of this season. He's capable of correcting that. He, he wasn't a turnover problem in the last couple of seasons. I think he could get that fixed when it's all said and done. Uh, but this Eagles roster is, to me, the second or third best roster in all football. Defense is excellent. They added Kevin Biner, which, again, is absolutely huge. Can't emphasize that enough. A.J. Brown is having a monster year. Defensive coordinator's got to stop acting like they can single cover this man and get away with it. Philadelphia is in a great spot right now. The best record in the NFC to me today, the best team in the NFC and the third best team in all football. At number two, it is the Baltimore Ravens. As much as this hurts me to say as a Steelers fan, I can't lie with what to, 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 to the audience with what my eyes have seen. I don't put them at number one. Obviously, you guys at this point know who number one is. The Baltimore right now, Lamar Jackson is at or, at or near the top of the MVP discussion. Once again, uh, had one of the best games of his career, a passer rating in the 150s against a top 10 defense in Detroit. Uh, four touchdowns in total. We know the threat he is with his legs. We have got to start re- respecting Lamar Jackson and what he can do with his arm from the pocket, even making throws outside the pocket. Now that he's got, got some actual NFL receivers, Odell Beckham Jr. and Zay Flowers, he already had Mark Andrews. Yeah, no duh. Of course he's having the best year of his career thus far as a passer in, in, in this league. This Ravens defense, I thought it was going to be good coming into the season. It looks elite. Okay, you have Patrick Queen playing outstanding. Roquan Smith, uh, this Ravens secondary, Marlon Humphrey. Uh, th- they've been really good. They're well coached with John Harbaugh. Uh, going in, it, it's one thing to beat Detroit, who, as you saw, I think is the fifth best team in football. One thing to beat Detroit. It's another thing to completely humiliate them and make them look like they're the worst team in football. Uh, great teams are capable of doing that. Baltimore's tough to beat. Uh, at home, again, their only two losses this season both came. One came in overtime, and the other came because the receivers couldn't catch a pass. And Kenny Pickett, fourth quarter Kenny, uh, came up big in that game for my Steelers, but Baltimore's in a great spot uh, today. They're today they're the biggest threat to Kansas City. Uh, I, I, I said that they were a Super Bowl contender this offseason. Love this roster. I think it's top five in all football, and Lamar is playing absolutely f- fantastic and out of his mind right now. Ravens are the second best team in the NFL, and that of course leads my original number one team coming into the season, the Kansas City Chiefs, and here is why. So Kansas City through the first seven games of the season. Right, they they they, they were the, the, this the, this defense has yet to give up over twenty points uh, this season. You say, well, Detroit scored twenty one again. Seven of those came off a Brian Branch pick six off Patrick Mahomes. So technically, the defense gave up fourteen points. Uh, the pass rush has been excellent. The secondary has been outstanding. Being able to do what they did against the Chargers in the second half of that game, making Justin Herbert look relatively pedestrian. Kellen Moore calling plays will will kind of help you in that regard. But again, that was a desperate desperation type of game for the Los Angeles Chargers coming off a tough loss to Dallas, uh, going 
going on the road to Arrowhead. Justin Herbert tends to play well at Arrowhead. But this Chiefs offense, I said it last week, or the week before, when they won that ugly game against the Broncos, 19-8, wasn't aesthetically pleasing as some might like on the Thursday night at Arrowhead Stadium. But I said, folks, Kansas City is for death. Okay, these are the games, these Chargers games, these Bills games, Bengals games, these games against elite quarterbacks, these are the games they wake up for. This is the games Patrick Mahomes wakes up for. Travis Kelsey wakes up for every game that Taylor Swift's there, obviously. Uh, he's trying to trying to impress the, the you know the most famous woman on planet Earth right now, okay? So, so props to him. He played incredible, over 170 yards receiving against the Chargers on Sunday. This Chiefs offense has found its rhythm. But, by the way, don't forget about Isaiah Pacheco, how well he can run the football, and this offensive line is amongst one of the best in the NFL. So the Kansas City Chiefs, to me today, are the best team in the National Football League. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live, as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.